Hey, Mark here again, and we're continuing in our series on residual energy and haunts. And tonight, in this segment, we're going to deal with how did we come to the point where uh, residual energy is so popular and just energy in general, why has it become so popular? So, in an attempt to try to shorten these things, I'm gonna, let me jump in real quick. How did we get to the place where the notion of residual energy is so commonplace? Why has energy taken on such a distinctive role, not just in hauntings, but in healing and in understanding of reality? You know, I think of Reiki uh, as just one example. Um, you know, it's we have moved from energy, small e, to energy with a capital E as ultimate reality. We have moved from a God-centered worldview to an energy-centric worldview. And this has given rise to such notions as residual energy. Dr. Peter Jones, theologian, he wrote the book The Other Worldview, and he has shown in this book that the New Age worldview has displaced the biblical worldview as the dominant worldview today. Uh, it started, uh, entered in the U.S. in the mid-60s, and we've been exposed to it for decades, and it has affected us in ways that, uh, uh, unconsciously, for, for many of us. So for me, it's no coincidence that the ascendancy of the occult, neo-gnostic, neo new age worldview coincides with the popularity of the notion of residual energy. I think it's cause and effect. The worldview has given rise to this this notion. How, how often have you heard the phrase sending uh, prayers and positive energy? And this is coming out of the mouths of, of Christians. Um, how many times have you said it? The sending of positive energy is equaled and in many cases eclipsed the pledge of praying to the living God from a friend to someone experienced a trauma. Clearly, energy has undergone a radical evolution recently. It's taken on such a profound and practical significance for countless numbers of people. And nothing reveals more about a person's real, basic spiritual convictions than how they pray. For many, energy has become the central organizing principle in their worldviews. I remember in seminary, a professor said that how a person prayed spoke volumes about what their true theological beliefs were. Hence, when the prayer of professing Christians includes pledges of sending positive energy, then we know this energy belief has deeply infiltrated the Christian community. You know, just think back 15 years ago. Did you hear or say positive energy was being sent out on behalf of a, a person I seriously doubt it something has changed therefore it is incumbent upon Christians that we understand this issue and sift it through a biblical worldview grid pulling down strongholds and arguments that are raised up against the knowledge of God 2 Corinthians 10 5 Otherwise, like the ancient Israelites, we shall fall into the unthinking syncretism, the blending of truth and falsehood. Ultimate reality, according to God's word, is the tri-personality of the living God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in loving, joyous communication for backwards eternity and future. Nothing, no one, is further back or more basic he existed eternally before he created energy in the universe, space, and time. However, today many people seem to assume that energy or the universe is ultimate reality. But that's an occultic, demonic deception. But it does explain why the notion of residual energy has taken hold so quickly in our culture, which has largely jettisoned the biblical God from its thinking. We have rejected the living God and exchanged it for the lie worshiping nature and energy in particular, Romans one twenty five. An idol does not have to be a figurine. It doesn't have to be mental metal, it can be mental, because by definition an idol is whatever is uppermost in our affections or considered to be the ground of our being. 
Those who research and investigate the supernatural realm, from quantum jumping to spirit hunting, are increasingly seeing ultimate reality in terms of energy. Now, energy vibrations of the cosmos, or cosmic consciousness, energy with a capital E, has become not only personified, but deified as well. This impersonal stuff that we call energy has now become our new god a new reference point for defining the cosmos, mankind, and our relationship to the cosmos. The Bible says, In the beginning God created, and bara, Hebrew, is an act of personal creating. Well, it's been replaced in this new worldview by, In the beginning, energy, with a capital E. It has become commonplace to believe that we are currently experiencing a quantum leap into a higher form of consciousness or energy, and it is often stated that we are spirit energy in a body and not vice versa. That's not biblical. It said, you know, raise your vibration levels and you'll experience wholeness with the universe. Instead of personal holiness before a holy God, we now seek personal wholeness by enhancing our energy vibrations. Now, as I alluded to, this is no mere dry-as-dust academic theory because it has become a paradigm, a worldview shift in how one understands who we are and how to become better at living and being human. What's the plethora of energy healers attempting to adjust folks' vibrational levels to harmonize with the vibrations of primal energy? And what must be noted with tears is that often these energy therapies seem to work in terms of affecting vibrational change and healing. But may I suggest, though, that, that we are playing God in this respect and are opening ourselves to deep demonic intervention the, de the demonic are clever, and all it takes is openness to this, quote, energy to potentially begin the oppression process. Usually at some opportune time, the demonic will find some imaginative way to gain permission for entry. We should have known better than to reject God and begin to call energy ultimate reality, or God, with capital, energy with capital E. Romans 1, 18 and following, following speaks of the endarkenment instead of the desired enlightenment which comes when we deify or make ultimate or worship any aspect of the Creator's creation, including one of His greatest creations, which is energy. We have rejected the living God and exchanged it for the lie, Romans 25. The essence of paganism is a denial of the Creator-creature distinction and that incenses God. Now, it is being intellectually, it is not being intellectually consistent or honest to spell energy with the capital E, because the bottom line is that this notion, that is energy is ultimate reality, implies that there was an impersonal beginning, and by adding an uppercase E, you have imported personality, creating it out of thin air. The only reason why we sense or detect personality with the energy entities is because they are personal beings, demons. Like humans, demons and Satan have a will, intelligence, and emotions. We have not dealt with ghosts per se uh, in this segment, but the ultimate reality is energy often accompanies the belief in ghosts. It is this occult worldview change which gave rise to this enorm its enormous popularity, ghosts and residual energy. Be wary of any talk of tapping into primal energy or cosmic consciousness. In our weakness, let us cling to the God who was manifested through the burning bush, the infinite personal God of the Bible, who has inexhaustible, um, omnipotent energy and power, Yahweh, the Lord Jesus. Thank you.